come. Let me tell you what they did to my friend, the one who brought an end and a beginning, bringing a new way of seeing to a world run by the blind and to find the one among the 99. What was his crime? Was this his time that he spoke of so often? Has he completely forgotten what it means to be a king? You don't die or let accusers lie or let traitors buy your life. You didn't try and stop it, never letting out a cry. You never explained why, at least not in a way that we could understand at the time. Let me tell you what they did to this man, the one who taught me that storms listen when their maker speaks and that waves and currents can be used as streets, that the world belongs to little children and the meek, and that true love rules by washing subjects' feet while his were nailed to a cross. After enduring the case of a false prosecution who feared a rabbi's one-man revolution, they beat him and crowned him prepared for execution on a cross. But let me explain their confusion because the cross they thought would be their solution was the same cross that ensured my sin's substitution. In other words, the tool used to torture a traitor was the same tool that terminated my transgressions. The place where a prisoner was pierced was the same place my pardon was purchased by the Prince of Peace. The setting where a usurper was slain was the same setting where my Savior secured my salvation. You see, here was their miscalculation. The cross where they thought they were crucifying a carpenter was the same cross on which they coronated a king. So cross, where is your sting? Where are your schemes? Where is your threat? Because yes, cross, you may have taken his final breath, but the king still had the final word. The prince still received the greatest prize. The Messiah still reopened his eyes as three days later, the sun got up to rise.